I'm going to let everybody actually introduce themselves. Um, you know, we've got a good crew. We've got a number of folks who do things very differently. Why don't we do quick intros? Um, so I run a podcast that I started back in January called The Pinball Innovators and Makers. You may have heard of it. You may not. If you're in this room, it's either because you care about this topic or because you wanted a good seat for the JJP reveal. So, uh, you know, we'll, 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 we'll pick what it is. So here, why don't, why don't we start down there? You go first and introduce yourself. Okay. Whoa. My name is Aaron Davis. Um, I have a company called Fast Pinball. We make electronics that people use to build pinball machines. And so I get the, uh, I tell people I, I started this company so I could build pinball machines and I've built zero complete pinball machines, but I've helped a lot of people make a lot of really great stuff. And so uh, these shows are a great chance to get together and see what everybody makes. So uh, these people are the ones who are making all this great stuff and uh, making pinball is awesome. So Aaron Davis, Fast Pinball. Uh, my name is John Manuelian. Everybody knows me as Lynn, so call me Lynn. I won't answer to John. Um, Stop that. There is no off button on that. Oh, there is there? Uh, where was I? Hey, I'm Lynn. And uh, I make homebrew games. I, I write video games for a living, but video games are not the same as mechanical pinball machines. So it fills a niche. Fills a niche, fills a gap. I'm Ernie Silverberg. I uh, started out uh, doing homebrew, um, just thought it was interesting, had recently got into pinball, and I've always been a tinkerer. Um, built the League of Legends machine that's out there and have started on a Beavis and Butthead pinball machine. Um, so the, this is the only time I'm going to mention this, but I do sell homebrew kits. I don't want to advertise up here, but if somebody's really interested, they are welcome to ask me questions. Don't have to buy anything, but I like to see what people come up with love to see homebrew games. Um, I get more excited about people building games that are not from the big companies than I do from the big companies. Yeah, same. Uh, my name's Greg Bolt. I'm out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, I've been a tinker, just like Ernie, most of my life, doing little electronic gadgets. I've always wanted to build a pinball machine, so two years ago, I was like, all right, I think I'm ready uh, at that point in my life to do it. And so I did Beer Fest, so if you give Beer Fest a play, that's me. Hope you enjoy it. It's been a fun process, and meeting the community and interacting with the community is, is one of my favorite things ever. I love coming to these things and, and just hanging out. So. Yeah. Forgot to mention I made Hunter Cruise and Magic Forest. So we uh, we actually have just about 20 custom and uh, and homebrew pinball machines on the floor. Most of them are in the corner in the, the homebrew custom section. There are a few sprinkled out throughout the, the, the show as well. So definitely uh, you know, walk around, check, and check them out. Um, every single one of those is a labor of love. Um, so just an honest quick poll here. Who here is actually here for this session and not just here to get good seats for JJP? All right, that, 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 that's a good critical mass. All right, so the, the first place I want to start, I've had, you know, I've had 14 guests on the podcast. A number of the people on the, on the stage have, have been on there. And one common theme is how to get started. Like people just don't have a good place of where to get started. And so I wanted to go down and the, the, the great thing about um, every single person's journey is that everybody does it differently. There is no one way to do this. There's no way, one way to skin this cat. So I figured if you guys can each talk about um, where, what was the first thing you did? Did you start with theme? Did you start with mechanicals? Did you start, you know, um, and talk about if you would do that again the same way or if you do it differently knowing now what you, what, knowing then what you know now. I'll go first. Uh, yeah, so uh, two years ago, I um, decided to, to start a pinball machine, and the first thing I did was come up with a theme. I sat down with my wife, and you know, we mulled some things over, and we had just watched the movie Beer Fest, and we love Beer Fest, and I like drinking beer. So I decided to make a fun like beer drinking theme uh, game. So that's kind of where I started. Um, and then I went to VPX. I, I kind of um, I just started building out a play field and seeing what shots worked what shots didn't. I didn't even own a pinball machine two years ago. Uh, I own the one I made now. But it, so it was a little difficult for me, um, specifically getting measurements for things. I know there's not really a standard, but there are standards out there. And that was actually a difficult uh, piece for me, is trying to figure out how high do I put my play field mount tracks? You know, It was surprisingly difficult to find that on the internet. And, and so, yeah, just kind of started going to the internet. Uh, forums were a huge benefit. 
meeting guys like Ernie uh, that would help me out. I'd be like, hey, could you tell me the distance between your, you know, your out lanes and in lanes? It's, it's seriously like that low level of, of issues that I just didn't know the answers to. So that's kind of where I started. And after doing VPX for a couple weeks, uh, VPX is a visual pinball for those that don't know. You you can create your play field, and it also has a simulated gameplay, so you can kind of get a feel for for how your shots are working. That's kind of where I started, and then after a couple weeks of that, um, I bought some white wood, bought some plywood, and just started screwing things in, and uh, th a lot of 3D printing. You'll see a lot of 3D printing on my machine. That was my go-to, because I'm not a great woodworker, metal worker, so for me, it's, hey, I can do a lot of good mouse clicks, and then a few hours later, I got a part. Uh, it's very precise into dimensions, and so that's kind of where I started, um, that prototyping. Yep. I got uh, started, I had built a virtual pinball machine, um, had that for about a month and decided that the real thing was better. And with the price of pinball machines, especially kind of during COVID, they were outrageous that I was looking into, I was like, I'll just build my own machine. Um, started out with a Gottlieb touchdown and I was like, I'll just retheme it, you know, start there. But with it being single level, I wanted ramps, different things, it was, it was very limited. So I was like, all right, I'm not doing that. I won't like it. So then I kind of just, uh, these guys have heard this before, but I just jump head first into things I don't really think. So I bought a piece of wood and started drilling holes. And then uh, that worked okay, but not the best. Found Greg through just research online and he had 3D printed, um, came up with a design for a 3D printed trough and outlane walls and things like that. So he actually let me use his files and started off there and started coming out with shots. And it was more of a physical, I didn't do anything on the computer. Um, so I just did everything physical. I'd make a shot. If it worked, cool. I like that. If it didn't, I would m cover that hole and, and then drill a new one. But uh, did that. And then I um, worked through locally. I found a guy that had a CNC machine. He had a CNC shop. And, worked with him to design some blank white woods and things like that. So I started off a little bit better with actual two dimension things and um, started using CAD to, to make cut files and transferred what I did on the play field to an actual uh, illustrator file and had that cut and kind of have went from there. Um, I don't jump quite head first anymore. I, I make educated, educated guesses at where I jumped before, but like I said, there's, there's all ways to start. Um, the biggest thing is don't be scared. You're gonna you can mess something up and fix it. It's not it's not hard to do that. So I'll I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, I'm working on my own machine, but I'm at the very early stages of it. And one of the first things that I realized I needed to do was actually talk to people, which is why I started the podcast. Um, I'm genuinely interested in the space, and I wanted to learn as much as I could about what people did. And so you know by you showing up to the forum here, by you know we have a, a session tomorrow from I believe two to four where you can actually meet all uh, everybody up here along with everybody else who built a machine and actually sit and talk to folks with with their machines and actually have you know more intimate discussions and so uh, meeting people talking to them really finding a community there's plenty of great resources out there which we're happy to share um, and then the second thing is I've found that crafting through the theme and in talking to a number of people crafting through the theme and really um, understanding what is the world under glass that you want to create if you actually want to create like some type of theme game it's usually a good place to start because then the rest of the game kind of unfolds like you know if you want to do a Muppet pinball machine having Waldorf and Statler sitting up there making fun of you as a topper it's a great place to start so so around 2007 uh, the, the development studio I was working for decided they wanted to make a PS3 pinball machine so that's how I got started. I had to figure out how to make a pinball machine uh, or what a pinball machine really was because we, we, th we knew what it was, but what are these rules? What, what, what is that? So luckily, the, the uh, simplest game that you could think of was at the uh, Monster Mini Golf nearby that we went to play, Simpsons Pinball Party. Very, very simple game, right, to, to understand the rules. So we learned how to play on that. Um, and we, uh, we made this PS3 game called Pinballistic. It's a downloadable game. It's a heads up game. It's really cool. Um, but that's kind of where I jumped head first into because I, I was told I had to do it. But uh, as other people said, virtual just isn't the same as the real thing. And so I bought a Mario Brothers pinball. I started playing it and I said, screw it, I'm going to make my own. So I just I started designing things in 3D Studio Max and then switched over to SolidWorks and things. And uh, it just kind of snowballed from that. 
Hi. Hi. So I got started um, with pinball. Uh, it was probably like 15 years ago or so, and I'd been in software for a long time, so it's very heady, and you're not doing much creative physically. And so what I really enjoyed most about pinball was like it has defined properties. It has a certain shape, certain size, certain things that make it pinball. And I also like technology, so the idea of bringing in new technology in a way that could enhance and bring more to pinball, but not necessarily change it into something that it's not. So um, I, in my software career, I was building platforms, and so like, I looked at most of what I do in building pinball. It's like, you know, here's something I can make, and what else can we make with it? So some of the first things I built for pinball were, um, if you've been to the Northwest Pinball Show, you've seen the, they call it the kids' pinball machine. And it was basically like a pinball machine with a lower third, and the play field was made of metal. It was just a sheet of metal up there, and it was designed so you could take kids' toys with magnet feet on it, and kids could come up there and lay out different games and then shoot the ball and see what would happen. And that was, that was pretty fun. And then... Um, Beyond that, I made, uh, you can see it in the booth right now, it was uh, 10 years ago, I brought a portable pinball machine to the uh, Chicago Expo. I needed to make a, a demo of some of the electronics that we had, and I took an Aztec play field and cut it in three pieces, it folds up into a cube, and it'll check with your luggage on the plane. And so that was like a really interesting physical form factor of pinball, but um, a different slant to it. So I like the traditional aspect of pinball and the creation of pinball from like an art standpoint. So I think that there's just certain traditions about pinball that we all love and I think that we all bring to it different experiences whether it's from like video game design or like different creative mediums but applying that to pinball is like really satisfying to see what that comes out like. Cool, thank you. Um, so the next, the next question for the panel is, um, you know, pinball is this multi-discipline, um, multi-specialty uh, you know, uh, physical system, um, and every single body, everybody approaches the uh, building a pinball machine with a different set of knowledge. So the question for the panel is, what is the thing that you brought to the table? Like, what is the expertise or the skill set, and what is the thing that you felt you had to learn? Like, let's call it the most, in order to deliver the machine. Yeah, so ever since I was junior high, high school, I've always been fascinated with electronics and electricity. So um, for 20, 30 years, that's what I would do. I would make little gadgets, microcontrollers, low-level embedded programming um, at that kind of, of layer. So I've always been comfortable with the electronics part of things and the software part of things. What I was not really comfortable with was more of the mechanical things. I'm not a good metal worker, woodworker, hence a lot of my machine is 3D printed because you know I can make it look nice, at least mildly nice uh, that way. Um, and art, artwork. Uh, I've, I've never been a great artist. Um, I, I've gotten better after having done this. Um, but that was one thing that really scared me. I did that last is like, oh, man, what am I going to do for art now? You know, <laughs> all I have is a single piece of wood. So, yeah, I think art and, and the more metal and, and woodworking were, uh, that's what I struggled with. Thank you. I would say that one of the benefits that helped myself get into it was the, the jumping head first into it. Um, and I mean that in a way that there's a lot of people that, are afraid to do something because they're not sure how it'll work or they'll mess up and I and it's, it's honestly my the negative about it is the same thing because sometimes I would take three steps back and you know five or three steps forward and then five steps back because I didn't think something exactly through but once I made that mistake I was able to learn what not to do again design it a little bit better and move on and, and over the course of the last year and a half or so, I would say that that has been my benefit and somewhat my downfall. Um, I've always kind of been a tinkerer with all kinds of stuff, electronics, mechanical, different things. So there were some things to learn there. But um, one thing I would mention is that there are resources for all kinds of things. If you're not strong at wood, there's local CNC shops. There's different people that offer things. Um, Fiverr is an app where you can pay somebody to do art for you. If you look at the art on League of Legends, I paid somebody to do that. Um, pretty reasonable as well. So there's there's uh, circuit boards on Fiverr. People will will design circuit boards for you for custom things. So there's availability everywhere. Oh me. Uh, what was the question? Uh, what did you bring to the table? Oh, what did I bring to the table? Um, what's your, what's, what's so. 
I'm a, I'm a software engineer by trade, right? So writing assembly, writing binary, you know, bare metal stuff, that, that, that's fun. That's easy, C++ easy stuff. Um, some of the woodwork was a little more difficult, especially when you don't have a CNC machine, so I bought a CNC machine. Um, some of the uh, plastic work and ramp work is difficult to do because of the type of forming, so I bought a thermoforming machine. Um, I'm in the process of buying a, uh, a plasma cutter machine for metal work because that's the, the next hump I have. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't buy these machines. There are other places you can go for this. I'm, I'm, I'm the idiot. Guys, don't. But um, I'm also that idiot that, that realizes, hey, I'm doing this so many times. I should just buy the machine. Um, that way, if I screw something up, then it's on me to fix it, and it's not some other person who owns the machine that hits me on the head. So they, a lot of it was just figuring out the manufacturing aspects of things that I, I just, I didn't quite know. I knew enough, but I thank, thankfully there's YouTube, and thankfully there's the internet these days. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of what I had to figure out. What I brought to the table, um, video game knowledge game development knowledge. Lynn is the kind of friend you want to have making pinball. He's <laughs> apparently got all the tools to do it. Um, let's and, see. And, and Aaron is the kind of guy who says, hey, let me use your tools. Let me use your tools. No. <laughs> um, I'd convince you it was my, your idea to let me use your tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, when I first started doing this, like, uh, I think that a lot of what I'm into is like the chance to learn something new, like a new skill or new, you know, a new chance to do something new. And so like 15 years ago, I'd not done much with electronics at all in my life. And I think that once I realized that pinball was something I wanted to do, that I realized that was something I needed to know. So my friend Dave Beecher, who's my partner in Fast Pinball, um, one of the greatest engineers I've ever met in my life, and he's that rare engineer that wants you to know everything that he knows. So everything that I learned through uh, making pinball came out of having a great mind there that wanted me to know these things. And so the more that I learned, um, the more I wanted to know. And so I think that um, what, for me, my experience with pinball has been an exposure to a lot of different disciplines and skills and stuff like that that I didn't know I needed to know. Like being able to use like CNC machines or do more advanced wood cutting or like 3D printing and stuff like that. It's, it's, it is a an endless supply of cool problems to solve. Like, it's like a STEM class in a literal box. Like, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, my kids get involved with it, all that kind of stuff. So I think that um, pinball's definitely been a good reason to learn a lot of really great stuff and meet a lot of great people. But I'd say, like, what I tend to bring to things is, like, in my career, it's been, like, how do you make something into something? Like, how do you take an idea and turn it into something? And I think that um, that's kind of the product mind that I have. So. I think that uh, seeing a lot of other people's cool ideas that kind of get to points where it's kind of a germination or germination of an idea or starting point and I love the idea of being able to like cheer them on and like point like hey what you're doing here if you added this maybe it could be this you know and I think that's one of the great things about the pinball community is there's so much collaboration and camaraderie but I think one of the other big things is the accountability too is that like you show me something I'll tell you, great, that sounds like a great idea. I hope that you do it. And then I'll ask you about it later. Did you actually do it? And if you tell me, like, oh, I watched crap TV all weekend, I didn't actually do it, you know, I might shame you a little bit and remind you you should do it. But um, I think that's one of the things I tend to bring to things is, like, I love to see an idea, and I love to see it brought all the way through. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big cheerleader for a lot of people making great things. Complete with pom-poms. We also started 15 minutes late. <laughs> no, I, I can. We, we I, I, can, can we take two questions from the floor? Sure. Okay. So um, we want we want to you know kind of inspire everyone to who's interested like take that first step, bring what you know to the table, go find community. If you have like a question that you want to ask among among the rest of the community, yeah, let's. This physics engine that we live in sucks. Um, you, you, t you hit the ball flat and it decides to jump in the air. I mean, it, if, uh, if, if you protect against everything you can, the ball will still find a way to go someplace you didn't f want it to go. Um, yeah, th 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 we need to reprogram this physics engine.
anybody else want to? No, I think that was a good answer. Okay. Uh, the, the, the question was, who's going to write the Four Dummies book of, uh, for all of this? Um, is, is, is there interest for a Four Dummies book? Um, there, there actually are a couple really good websites that break down step-by-step, um, step, like everything you need to do, how every mechanism works, how a machine comes together. Um, Ernie, you know, to his credit, does have um, a, a, a starter kit. Aaron also, you know, does do fast. It's one of the control boards that's used, and not just used in, in the homebrew, but as you can see with Labyrinth, it's used in, in production systems, as well as Fathom and, 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 and others. And so, but if you, like, it, being that there isn't a book, I, I'm, I'm happy to write the book. Um, I'll, 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 I'll go do it. But, get, like, seriously, given that there isn't a, a, a book on it, the next best thing is there's a couple of web resources, which we're happy to share with you. One thing I want to mention quick, don't be afraid to fail, guys. You're going to fail a lot, and you're going to spend a lot of money in your failures, but that's part of learning. Oh, on, uh, on, on, on that, it doesn't have to be an expensive hobby. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't. doesn't be, you, it does. you can use recycled parts. Two, two o'clock tomorrow? Two o'clock tomorrow for your homework space?